If you uh, were paying attention uh, yesterday, the Senate Christian fascist whip, the job of the whip in a political party is to make sure that he shows up, you know, whip them into the chamber so they can vote. Anyway, the whip of the Christian fascist party is uh, Senator John Thune, South Dakota Christian fascist. And he said Monday that he is running for Republican leader, the uh, uh, position to succeed this crazy, miserable bastard Mitch McConnell, who says he's stepping down after the election in November. Um, Now, the fact that Thune announced that he's going to be running for the position of Republican Party leader in the Senate further shows the control that the orange antichrist has over these people. I would think a a Republican like John Thune, a senator for Christ's sake, would have enough sense to not declare that he agrees, and he said this, that he agrees that the election was stolen from the orange vermin. I mean, this is fucking unbelievable. So we're going to have election deniers in the House, in the Senate, uh, in the military, in, in I, I mean, every place you look are these election deniers, which it it, it should be noted. It, it proves what Hitler said in his Mein Kampf, his struggle. And that is to tell the big lie. If you're going to use a political lie, make it as big as, as you possibly can. For example, the election really went to my opponent. But I'm going to claim it. I'm going to tell the American public over and over again that it was stolen. And I'm going to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until it finally fucking sinks in to a huge minority population in the country, which is exactly what has happened here. I think it's a minority of the Christian fascists in this country. Well, I guess they wouldn't be Christian fascists if they weren't supporters of uh, the Orange Antichrist. So I guess what I'm trying to say, it is a horrific shock to the system. It's like it's like putting your finger under a running faucet and then jamming it into an electric outlet in your house. Huh? That wouldn't make sense, would it? But sometimes I get that 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 horrible have you ever been shocked by your house current? I have once. I thought I was going to fucking die, by the way. But if you've ever had that happen to you, it is, whoa. And for a moment, you really do think that, you know, your brain's going to click off and your heart's going to stop. You know, if, if you've had this experience, experience, you know what I'm talking about. But so often in the past couple of years, that's what it feels like to me, is that somehow I pulled my finger out from under running water and jammed it into electrical outlet and zzzz, although there's no sound, not really, there's just some internal vibration that you know is screaming, you're about to die. And I feel that this country, if Trump, if this filthy bastard succeeds, then the country's going to die. So here's John Thune, an election denier. He was speaking in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, yesterday. And he said he wants to succeed Mitch McConnell. Because McConnell announced last week he's stepping down, yada, yada, yada. And... When asked if he wants to be the Republican leader, if he wants to take that position, he said, quote, I hope to be, and I'm going to do everything I can to convince my colleagues, they're the voters, they're the ones who will ultimately make the decision, end quote. Voters? What the fuck do you know about voting, Thune? 80 million people voted for Joe Biden. 70 million voted for the Orange Antichrist. So why don't you accept that? What do you mean the voters uh, will ultimately make the decision? Now, there's one other Christian fascist who has tossed his uh, hat into the ring, and that's, of course, the despicable John Cornyn of Texas, a former whip. 
And he, at one time, he was the, Cornyn was the Senate Republican campaign chairman. He announced that he was going to try to succeed Mitch McConnell last week. There's some others that uh, could jump into the race. Former uh, uh, so-called president and antichrist, the orange bastard, urged Steve Daines of Montana, senator, to seek the position. And then, of course, the most criminal son of a bitch currently in the Senate, Rick Scott of Florida, who, who ran a health insurance company that fucked over tens, hundreds of thousands of retired people, stole their fucking money, took everything they owned, ripped them off. And then this bastard went on to be the governor of Florida and then a senator. He never went to prison. His company was fined, the largest fine, I think, in the history of fines levied by the U.S. government against a company for fraudulently... So Rick Scott, who lost to to McConnell in a challenge to McConnell's position after the 2022 midterms, looks like he's going to get into it too. A fraud. Every single one. Have you noticed? But an essential qualifying uh, requirement for anyone who wants to go into a Republican Party so-called leadership position right now is to be a fucking criminal. To be either a rapist or a fraudster or somebody who who hates women and demonstrates that hatred by legislating away their sovereignty over their own bodies. Have you noticed this? Every single Christian fascist leader has got to be, as a mark of his viability or her viability, is to have been convicted of something Well, the vote for McConnell's replacement won't be held until after the November elections, and it will be conducted by secret ballot. Ooh. And in, in, in talking to a reporter on Monday, this, this son of a bitch, John Thune, this election denier, this election denier, In other words, John Thune is another one who wants to destroy, to rip to pieces American democracy and replace it with this Christian garbage. He said, Thune did, that he would help Republicans, if he is the Senate uh, leader, he would help Republicans be a, quote, check and balance, end quote, against the Democratic agenda. The Democratic Party agenda, but he might as well have said a check and balance against democracy because that is exactly what these bastards have in mind. You know this by now. I, I, I know if you listen to this podcast and don't shriek at your uh, uh, radio or phone or iPad or computer, however you listen to this podcast, if you listen to it, you're not screaming, you bastard Malloy, you fucking maniac. <laughs> if you do anything other than that, you know this shit. You know all this. Now, getting over to the orange scum, this subhuman, this beast, this antichrist, who, who is described in the book of Revelation. I, I, I mean, the, 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 I, I've said this before. I've been saying this for a couple of years now. It just shocked the hell out of me that the Christian nutcases have been for 1,800 years, 1,900 years, warning about the advent of the Antichrist. Ooh, he's coming, and it's going to be awful. And then when the son of a bitch shows up, they make him president of the United States? What cog slipped in, in, in the minds of these people? Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, 
can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.